Have you ever thought of patterns as mirror images? When you think of popular motifs in Indian design, buta or bote sits on the top of the list. You might not recognize it by its name, but this motif has been part of the global textile traditions for centuries. Bote's have evolved from appearing in architecture, shawls, and wall hangings to contemporary fashion in the form of footwear, ties, and even automobiles. And yet, its shape and form has evolved with trade routes and migration of people around the world. In this episode, we look at two textiles, a Kashmiri fragment from the Kotsan Textile Traces Study Collection at the George Washington University Museum and the Textile Museum, and a Dorukha Kalamkari from MAPS Collection. In both of these textiles, the bote appears differently, owing to how and where they were made. The buta or bote has many names and meanings, and its origin is uncertain. Some state that a pattern was derived from a simple flower flanked by leaves, a motif established in 7th century Persian art, while others see it as a leaf form that evolved over time into a cypress tree motif. Bote are also seen as almond, tear or cone shape and most commonly as mango shaped patterns. They may originate from India or from Persia. Kashmiri shawls with bote motif became very fashionable in Europe in the second half of the 18th and 19th centuries. Europeans were seduced by the intricate and exotic pattern as well as by the exceptional softness, warmth and light of the wool. To respond to the increasing demand, the manufacturing town of Pesley in Scotland began to mass produce cloth in imitation of these Indian textiles with a bote pattern that became to be known in the West as the Pesley motif. Variations of the bote motifs are also featured in this Kalamkari textile from the early 20th century. While Kalamkari means pen work in Persian, Makers in Machali, Patnam, Andhra Pradesh also used a pen or kalam to paint the cloth. Kalamkari was eventually used to refer to block printed textiles like this piece. The cone shaped patterns in the four corners emerge from a heart shaped flower pot, while the mango shaped patterns across the border here act as flowering trees with peacocks perched on branches. If you look closely, you also see that there are botes within botes appearing along this border. Did these motifs or shapes have hidden meanings or symbolism? The cone shape that we see here could also be interpreted as a cypress tree, sarv, a sacred tree known for its beauty and wisdom. Some other interesting motifs around the botes include peacocks perched on them holding a snake. Below them at the border is an inscription which translates to Abu Talib in the center and Kafir and Mumin printed on star-shaped motifs. Each of these elements indicate its connection to Islam. What is precious with fragments is that they allow comparisons and close examinations. While comparing the map textile and the Kutzen fragment, we can observe a rich variation in the bote motifs. The Kashmir fragment from the 18th century is part of the Kotsan Textile Traces Study Collection, which was donated by the late Margaret Spurlick Kotsan, Lord Kotsan's wife, to the George Washington University. It is patterned with two navy and red ovular bottes on an off-white ground. Each bote has clusters of three red flowers along the center line. 
These two patterns at first sight offer a symmetrical shape which is uncommon with the body motif. They generally tend to be placed asymmetrically. If we look closer at the constant fragment, we can notice that it is in reality composed of two pieces reknitted in the middle, creating this surprising symmetrical motif. It may have originally been a long band composed of half body motifs, which could have been produced not as a cashmere shawl, but as a simple band to decorate the bottom of an European dress. It may also have been a shawl repurposed into a dress material or fragments of a shawl joined together. What is certain is that these two bodies from the Cotson fragment were not symmetrical originally. A wooden block was most likely used to create this Kalamkari cloth. It uses the technique where a portion of the cloth resists the dye to create a shape. One of the important ports out of which resist dye textiles would travel to Europe from India was Iran. The bote was widely popular in Iran and spread to India at the end of 17th century during the Mughal rule. It was especially featured in fine woolen shawls like this one from the Khotsin collection that were woven in Kashmir and later exported in large quantities to Europe. While the Kashmiri fragment might have been used as part of a dress, we can also speculate about the purpose of the Kalamkari Dorukha. What was it used for? Who might have used it? This Kalamkari is called a Dorukha, which means that it is printed on both sides. It could have been used in public baths as wraps, known as Katif or Hole. The ones like this Kalamkari with a white background were used by women. When we look at the front and back nets to each other, the mirroring is more evident. However, their large size makes it difficult for us to imagine its use as a towel because of loose threads on each end. Why the Kalamkari Doruka in the MAPS collection is block printed? The Kotsan Kashmir fragment is made with double interlock twill tapestry woven Kashmir called Kani in India. The Kani technique is very complex, requires high skills and incredible patience to be completed. It evolves the views of small wooden oblong floating spools called kani. Unmade Kashmiri kani can be distinguished from its mechanical European copy by looking at the back. Looking at the fragment from the cotton textile traces study collection together with the Kalamkari Doruka from MAPS collection, we can observe and trace how the body motif varies in its expression based on regional and cultural practices.